This is part 2 of exercise 1 for tutorial 7. I've now calculated out the final ranks for both time and grade. And I've moved those over here into this table. So I've got rank time and rank grade. Now, the next step is to calculate the difference. So 6 minus 8 gives us minus 2. 9 minus 8 gives us 1. 6 minus 5 gives us 1, 11.5 minus 12 gives us minus 0.5, and so on for the rest of the 12 individuals in the sample. Then we simply square these values. So minus 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, 0.5 squared is 0.25, minus 1.5 squared is 2.25, and so on. And finally, we add these values up to give us a sum of the differences between the ranks squared. This is our sigma di squared. We then take that value and put it in the formula for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So we have 1 minus 6 times 18.5 divided by the number of students, 12 cubed, take away 12. That's these values down here. That adds up to 1716. So we've got to work out 6, 6, 6 times 18.5 is equal to 111. So we've got 1 minus 111 over 1716 and that works out to 0.935. That's a high value, close to 1, indicating a strong positive correlation between these two variables. The final step in testing the null hypothesis is to go and compare our calculated value to the value from the statistical tables. In the case of Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, we don't use degrees of freedom. We simply use n equal to the number of observations in the sample. So we go over to the table and across to the row for 12 observations and the 0 0.05 column, the value in the table is 0 0.95, 0 0.59. Our calculated value of Spearman's rank correlation is 0 0.935, which is clearly greater than 0 0.59. So we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a correlation. 